This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk. Back to the Champions League pool on Free Sports. Our second match of the night is locked and loaded, ready to go. It's Aaron Davies against John Sullivan. Screech versus the Soul Man. Aaron Davies comes into tonight as the favourite of the four players to take the crown. And move on into the knockout stages. Well, that is not an ideal start. He's going to hand the table over to John Sullivan. We'll have keyboard in hand to get the first frame underway we've seen both of these two quite frequently actually in, in recent months both have played an active part in our shootout showdowns and Davies as well played in the Super Series back in the summer the first tournament back since the pandemic lockdown John's got to get a bit of a wiggle on him he's alright but we've enjoyed watching these two Aaron Davies um, got a a mini crown in an event that was relatively similar in terms of format to this one actually with the four to one that he won uh, about six weeks ago now i think and it was a decent lineup for uh, for that four to one as well yeah incredible lineup and a brilliant performance for aaron to win that um beating uh, phil harrison and in his first round match and then liam white in the second round match jimmy croxon made up the four but that was uh, probably the highest highest profile or highest quality four to one we showed uh, and he came through that fairly comfortably. Um, sort of made his name uh, here on Free Sports, at least, uh, the World Championships, beginning of the year, which feels years and years ago now, but uh, losing out in the final to, to John McAllister. But, you know, sort of, he's been uh, well known for a while. He's a very young man. Um, but yeah, the big uh, world title runner up. Looks like he's going to get off to a losing start in this frame because John has absolutely flown through this finish. Yeah, he means business, doesn't he, does John Sullivan? We mentioned he'd appeared a couple Frame. of times in shootout showdowns. He's actually been somewhat of the bridesmaid on free sports. He had a deciding frame loss and a Blackpool shootout defeat as well. Man on a mission tonight by the look of things after that first frame. This is Aaron Davies, who signal down before he knows it here if uh, John continues in this vein nickname is Screech if you've never seen Saved by the Bell you might not get it but if you have you know uh, 23 year old he's still so young you know he's a 2015 under 18s champion which just feels absolutely crazy but uh, a really really high quality player and I think the and a result that stands out there as well is the World Masters semi-final as well which shows you can do it in just about every code of the game yeah there's one thing doing it at the junior titles and, and you know he's been tipped for a very long time because of his junior record you know and they, that is a great junior record but to burst onto the senior scene and, and make it through to the, the World Masters semi-finals and then of course the World uh, World Championships the IPA World Championships it's just a brilliant performance from Aaron and the one thing you have to say with Aaron is that everyone's been saying how good a player is he probably doesn't believe it himself yet he's probably with these results and these performances he's starting to believe it but he can go a very long way in this game such as his ability well, there's the first break from John Sullivan and it is not to be in terms of getting a ball down so he hands the table over to Aaron Davies and it's a good table this as well this is a that you'd expect Aaron to make so in play. nice kiss to move that yellow but the, he's looking to move that yellow out the way of the pocket for the for the eight ball but the white has not ended up kind for him might have to play a bit of an exhibition shot here down the left rail I'm not sure he's got a huge amount else to look called. at it's called his extension let's have a, an analysis of all the options what can you see here Si? Oh, I, I was immediately surprised he went for reds over yellows but actually when you look at it the yellow at the top of the table doesn't pass to the top right and the yellow uh, nearest the, the cue ball now he's just gone past didn't go to the bottom left so you can see why he went reds and 
uh, was just a bit unfortunate with the kiss he got. He got it slightly too full. Uh, at least he hasn't given the frame away. He hasn't. Uh, you know, he's made sure of the contact, and the two yellows I've mentioned are still a problem for John Sullivan here. He's just nudged that one. That may be awkward as well. I think it still goes to the right centre. fair to say we've not seen the best of John here on free sports he's uh, as you've already mentioned we've seen him a couple of times since uh, lockdown and hasn't performed very well I had a go at the uh, in a shootout last year as well and, and didn't perform his best he's a very well-known player and well, that's an excellent shot off the jaw um, but has yet to find his form on free sports by his own admission probably playing a little bit too quickly hadn't settled with the, the shot clock a bit steadier today, although it's early signs. Oh, lovely. He's also looked absolutely lethal. Doesn't yeah. look like missing, does he, at the moment? Does have a, a great air about him, John Sullivan. I've really talked him into the miss there. That really does tend to happen. I'll be amazed that often. Apologies for that one. But, um, but when he's playing well, and he gets himself on a run, which, I mean, he wasn't there, he'd, he'd won one frame, but if he can get up ahead of steam, particularly in, in sort of longer matches and, and nights like this, for example, he's the sort of player who can really almost take the game away from you, the way he, he sort of strides around the table, he's a very confident man, and when he's really at it, he's a real threat. Yeah, he plays a lot of money matches. Um, he's well known for. He probably he's probably played more money matches than, than anyone. I think there's <laughs> he's played he's played by his own admission hundreds. Um, and he has that aura when he's at the table. He dominates the table, doesn't he? He sort of owns it when he's out there, and, and it's his visit. He really, you know, he, he is an intimidating character. Um, if he can find the form that he shows in some of those money matches, then it is a, a real treat to watch. The direct contrast to him really is is Aaron Davies in terms of style, very very methodical, very calculated almost. Just there's no, no one way to do it. And ultimately Aaron has had some great success in his young career so far. I mentioned Simon. I think you're probably right where he talks about he probably doesn't have that self-belief just quite yet in his in his game. He always always seems to say that he's not even the best Q artist in his own house. <laughs> never yeah. mind is that never mind in tournaments, right. etc. But Aaron is on the board. One one. This is the uh, the Soul Man's profile. He's from North London, big big Spurs fan. So see there he's got one singles title to his name but his real name is made in those money matches as you mentioned Simon and he has got a fairly decent degree of notoriety yeah he's got a fantastic record not that anyone probably knows his exact record uh, in money matches because uh, he's played hundreds of them as we've already said but yeah the, the title that he's you know put up there that the back to singles title is a, a very prestigious title and a very difficult title to win because there's hundreds of players that play in that event and it's short races so a uh, brilliant title to pick up um, but everyone in the full world knows uh, knows about John Sutherland. And his opponent tonight there and Davies is well was fairly well known with a, with a stellar youth career but really just rocketed to prominence earlier on in the year with that performance at the World Championships in particular. It wouldn't probably be fair to say he came from nowhere, but he was a real outsider heading into that tournament. No, don't think there would have been a single bet on him to make the final, apart from maybe his brother. Yeah, absolutely. He came through, you know, he had to qualify through, which meant he, he was going to have a harder run through to the final as well. And he, uh, yeah, he just was relentless. He played brilliantly all the way through and he took a brilliant performance from John McAllister to stop him from lifting that world title. But I think it's, oh, he's got black on, on the move this time. I was just going to say he's uh, 23 years old. I think there's going to be some world titles in his future. He's certainly going to be uh, have plenty of opportunities going forward. He's a player you really like the look of when he plays, I know, because he seems to play the game like you seem to think about the game. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, he, he, he's a very um, considered player. You know, he really works out 
you know, how he wants to go about it. That's not a good start, though, in this this visit. And Plant, if he makes that, he's got a great chance and he's given the chance to, to John. But he, yeah, he, he plays, I think he plays the right way. He, if he doesn't, if he doesn't think the finish is on, he'll he'll play the, the right snooker, the right um, containing shot or safety shot, and then clear up next time. He doesn't. He's not a player that comes to the table and is all out aggression. He has a such a well-rounded game, um, and it, because he plays with that style and that, that well-rounded game, it's you see some players and you think, well, if they play well, they're going to win. With Aaron, you feel like if he just plays solid, he's going to win because he, his game is so consistent because of the way he plays. Black ball's the key here. He wanted to play on the yellow to the top right. I was going to. I was wondering whether the yellow to the top right would be a better last ball for him, assuming the black went to either the top left or the centre pocket. Uh, but he, he's finished awkward on the yellow anyway, so it's going to be end of visit. Yeah, it's a tough shot that. It's not come out terribly for John. I think he probably played that with half an eye of, of playing it at pocket weights. It would hold. He hasn't come out terribly for him. Aaron has got the ball that's now blocked by that yellow. Doesn't really have a huge one to go at his own right. That's a clever little shot, but I don't think he's blocked the pocket for John. No, he needed some cover. I think he was trying to get the white across to be behind the, the red that wasn't moving. And then he got clever one, cover with one of the others, but it wasn't to be. John hasn't taken advantage. Let's see what he was trying to do. Whether he needed to make it sort of that intricate, I'm not sure, but for Aaron here, this is a good chance. That's a clever shot. Gets rid of one of John's balls, and that is a legal shot, remember. His own first, and he's given John something to think about here. He forces John to move this. Oh, what a shot! What a good shot that is from John Sullivan. That is brilliant. That's fantastic. That really is. That was a great choice of shot from Aaron. Puts John under all sorts of pressure, but he's come up with the goods there. And the way he's played this, this black does go to the left centre. So that is some brilliance from John. Stroke of magic from the soul man. Can he finish it off? Ah! Yes, he can, and he gives it a big oh. one as well. Same. He knows how important that might be. This is some shot. A shot that deserves to be celebrated. Yeah, he's some character, John. He really is. And uh, yeah, he's uh, letting us know how much he enjoyed it out there. That was brilliant, though. So we'll pop this one up for you again. The uh, rules that we played tonight, international rules. Practice, whilst it's it's nice to see the, the short bullet points. In practice, it's it's easier to follow than that is an exercise, wouldn't you say, Simon? We've we've seen one week of it already. I think realistically, the one with the act, what happens after a foul and then what happens with a combination shot, really the two to really know the ones that are actually regularly in play. Yeah, I think I think for. Anyone new to the game, I think this is the simplest form of ball to pick up. I, I really do believe that. I actually uh, played a few frames Frame at the four, weekend with a, with a lad that didn't really know the rules of ball, and we played these win. rules, and he picked them up quicker than I did. You know, I'm new to these rules as well. So I think as a, as a new to the sport, I think these are really good rules and um, really easy and simple to, to pick up. And um, having played them myself, I, I just absolutely love, the, love these rules. I think they're brilliant. And you were a sceptic initially. Oh, uh, absolutely. I'll hold my hands up. You know, when I first saw these rules come out, you know, a couple of three years ago now, I was, I was a sceptic. But uh, giving them a Red chance, and giving them some time and actually playing these rules, they're fantastic. They really are. It's very, very attacking rules, very aggressive rules, very simple rules. But um, yeah, no, I think they're fantastic. Slightly awkward nudge for John. He really wants to play this red now because it's hard to land back on it, but he's difficult to get good position having to accept bad position, although it's not that bad, he's on the middle of those three reds, so this is okay. Having done the hard work, lets himself down with another mid-range sort of pot, not one, it's 
expects to miss. A let off for John. I expected Aaron to get that one. It was a tough pot, but missed it by a distance. And that makes it worse for him. Oh, he's he's going to get back to the table himself. I was going to say he hasn't covered the black or the red at the bottom left, so still the reds were wide open with one good pot. player is really settled so far. And that is another example. Aaron is such a calm, collected man. You can even see there, very rare that you get that sort of visible annoyance on him. Yeah, I don't think he's happy with the way he started this match. He definitely looks a little bit off. That's brilliant from John. A little bit unfortunate not to have better position. An excellent pot to the left centre off, playing it off his own ball. I think this goes to the bottom left. He's some pot. No, he's just going to take the pocket. He's going to try and take the pocket. He hasn't got the, the red part of that shot right. He wanted the red to stay nearer the pocket, but I think he's got the white okay. He would have done could have done with an extra roll further down the table so that Aaron had absolutely nothing to go at. Oh, Aaron maybe can get to the one to the bottom uh, right. Oh, he can. So that shot really did get away from John. Probably fair to say, out of the four players tonight, John's the one that's newest to the rules. Um, and it might take him a little bit longer to kind of get comfortable with the, some of the shot selections and some of the choices. Having said that, played the, the tactical shot there. Thought of it quickly and executed it. Well, in good time. I guess so, yeah. Just didn't execute the shot as well as he wanted to. We saw a, a group of four last week where we had one player who, in Martin McIntyre, was very open about the fact that he wasn't too familiar with the rules, just excited to play in the event. And you can see it affected him in, in a few certain in instances. But for, for John there, why are we... Certainly not used to it, and certainly the least experienced of the four, but done his homework in that sense. Tricky positional shot, just needs to avoid the black. Oh, he's done that well. Would have loved an extra two or three rolls up the table, but there's so much space to go in and out of the top end of the table to land on this black. And this for 2-2. Two, two. And there we have it. Friends. Less than six minutes to go. And all square. Plenty to play for. Yeah, both players have had plenty of chances as well. Both players will probably be annoyed they're not uh, in a slightly better position, especially John having gone to the head. He probably feels he should have won that frame or certainly giving himself a better opportunity to win the frame. Aaron, I suppose, will be happy having gone behind that uh, he's still in this match. And of course, it is Aaron's break next, so if he can find something on his break and give himself an opportunity to get in front, he'll be getting in front at the right time. Yeah, we've seen some magic moments really from John Sullivan, but both players have been fairly consistently inconsistent in a way. We've seen almost a, seems like an error every single frame from a pair of them. Neither have settled particularly quickly, which is surprising because it should be, in theory, the two of the more experienced ones in in this group in particular. You know, before that here, these two have had multiple appearances on, on the free sports stage in the last few months. Yeah, I know it's a, I know it's a very short uh, match so far, but you have to say, you know, from what we've seen in the shootout so far, this is probably Aaron's weakest performance. Um, Yet yeah, he's still in the match. I know it's only four frames of Paul, um, but he was very solid in the, the shootout series that we had. It took a great performance from Sean Story to knock him out. Um, he was brilliant in his first round match, winning comfortably. Um, just so solid. Um, but he knows he's got that in there, so he's just got to keep fighting away, and and it will come. Big moment in this match with five minutes 50 on the clock. Which player will get the opportunity 
to go in front. Black in motion again. Excellent break. Does do that really well, does Aaron. Gets the eight ball moving fairly consistently. Mind it. Pop the black off the break. You win the frame. So looking at yellows and looking at the table, my only question mark is the two yellows Yellow nearest the triangle area. Do either of those go to the bottom left? I'm not sure that they do. Look very tight. If they do, if one of them goes, then it makes the other one easier to solve. It makes it a great chance. If they don't, then this is tricky. That shows that uh, neither neither go past that that red. So he has to try and get low on those two yellows to the centre or top pockets. He's played a cannon into them. That will do. That's worked out perfectly. He can now take yellow to the right centre, leave himself on yellow to the left at uh, left corner, and the other yellow, the one he's nearest to, does go to the left centre pocket. So really well worked out, cannon. Perfect position all of a sudden. Yeah, it's absolutely as played as well, every single yeah. inch of that. Beautiful shot from Aaron Davies in many ways, just as good as the shot that John played a couple of frames ago, the double to leave himself the yellow down the rail. I think he's got the perfect angle as well, just to drift up the right-hand side of the red. Just needs to make sure that he doesn't let that red block his view can comfortably slide by it. It would be a very, very good time for Aaron Davis to break and dish. Never in doubt. 3-2 to Aaron Davies. Okay. Tap of the knee from John Sullivan. Recognises what a good clearance that was. And We've said it's been a poor start from both players, really by their own very high standards, but that's what Aaron Davies can do. Yeah, absolutely. They did not put a foot wrong the whole visit. You could, I suspect he probably had an idea of how he wanted to develop those two, two problem balls at the bottom, you know, right from his first shot and executed it to perfection. Um, perfect all the way through. Brilliant stuff from Aaron at the right time as well. He was staring 3-1 behind uh, two, three, four minutes ago, wasn't he? Now he's 3-2 in front. Giving John something to think about. He had a long time left. We mentioned this in the first game that in terms of minutes, there's plenty, plenty to play for still. I'd always rather be in the lead at this stage of a match in, in shootout pool. That's for absolute certain. Three and a half minutes though, long way to go. We may even get the full seven frames in here. What can John Sullivan produce from this break? Straight in off and straight in off as well. And Davies leaps to his feet. Worth remembering as well that it, we are in a race to four format. If Aaron can clear these, he is in the clear and he gets the win. Could be a crucial break that for John Sullivan. Red's the choice. Yeah, Red's is his choice. Just looking at the two reds to the bottom right. They plant, but landing on them is difficult. The red to the bottom left, I don't think goes. He may just have enough of it sticking out if he lands on the right angle. Um, well, in fact, that play's playing it now, so it does. He made that decision for reds very quickly, which with the lie of the table, I thought would take more time, but got a great eye for a pattern as Aaron Davies, and he seems to have himself in position here. I also think that he's 3-2 in front and that, that helps that decision because reds were definitely the, the colour set to control the frame if he didn't land where he needed to for the clearance. But of course, you know, he has found the two good positional shots he needs and now one more good pot on this red. Although actually looking through to the black, the black's semi-awkward. It does go to the bottom right-hand corner pocket. It's been much more like it from Aaron Davies. Can he get himself over the line? I think the red to the top right is just off the right angle. 
It looks like if he screwed back, if he screwed back towards the, the red, and he wants to leave himself just off, just high on that red, but not too much. You can see it's going towards the red, and now I, I think he's got too much angle to play for the black to the bottom right-hand corner, but his second option is the black to the left centre. You can see him just come round and have a look. If he drifts this past the black, there you go, that camera angle gives us the perfect shot at it. Holder, use that one really nicely. This for the win. Beautifully done from Aaron Davies. A couple of stellar clearances from Aaron there to round off a really close match. Neither player particularly at their best in that one, especially in the early going. But Aaron eventually getting himself settled and taking really big win yeah very impressive from Aaron that was he was struggling he you know he doesn't show much emotion at the table but he was showing a little bit of frustration out there but to finish off you know from struggling he's gone break dish reverse dish to win the match excellent stuff from Aaron and he did start this match at this group as the, the favorite and he's off to that great start that he wanted he certainly is. He goes top of the group. We've still got plenty of games for you, though. And match number three of the Champions League pool is on its way when we come back 